when someone has a disc herniation in their neck that's causing them arm pain, the main ways of addressing it are from the front of the neck or from the back of the neck. Now to go through the front of the neck requires removal of the disc, which is one of the commonest ways of performing the procedure. And therefore, when the disc has been removed, the two options are to either put a spacer in between the two bits of bone, the two vertebra, to convince them to fuse together. And that's what an anterior cervical discectomy infusion is or to replace the disc with an anterior cervical discectomy and replacement or an anterior cervical disc replacement. The commonest reason for someone to present who would need one of these operations is what we call brachialgia, which is a medical term for someone presenting with often pins and needles and pain that radiates from their neck all the way down their arm, often towards the fingers. It's associated with pressure on the spinal nerve in the neck on either the left or right hand side that causes squeezing around that and the nerve symptoms then transmit down to the area that is supplied by that nerve. So broadly speaking, the procedures are very similar. It's just in terms of what is placed into the disc space that's been removed, be it the fusion spacer or be it the disc replacement. It involves an incision at the front of the neck, usually to one side, and then getting to the front of the neck and removing that disc and then placing the spacer into that area there, be it the disc replacement or the, uh, the fusion block itself. It does involve um, often an overnight stay, although if your procedure's in the early part of the day, then it's possible you could be um, have the surgery as a day case. However, usually for the sake of observation, one night in hospital is all that's required. Spinal disc replacement and spinal fusion are have different indications and they're not one for one fits all for everyone. A disc replacement requires the neck to still be supple and still have movement so that that movement can be preserved. The principle of disc replacement is that it keeps that 7 to 10 percent of movement that you would otherwise lose if you fused that disc space together. But it does mean that the neck has to not be too stiff beforehand and that there can't be too much compression from other sources or too much stiffness, for example, in the joints at the back of the neck. Fusion is a good operation and certainly is uh, suitable for a lot of people. And the difficulty comes if you're doing more than one level or more than one disc, the rates of fusion or non-union rates, as we call it, do increase. And therefore, disc replacements remove that need for the two bones to fuse together as we're preserving the movement within the neck. The risks involved in the procedure are broadly similar. The uh, main difference between the two are of with a fusion, the bones not fusing together or a non-union or taking a long time to do so, or with the disc replacement that it can wear out or fail as the movement occurs. Otherwise, there are what we call approach related considerations. So through the incision at the front of the neck, we're near to some quite important structures and they can be bruised or uh, damaged slightly during the surgery. Those are all very rare. However, uh, your surgeon would go through all of those options and risks with you prior to an operation. So in my practice, I would normally expect people to stay in hospital for one night at most, if everything's gone swimmingly, and then they'd be discharged. And I tell them to avoid any lifting for around six weeks, any heavy lifting with the arms does put pressure through the neck. In terms of driving, most people are back to it as long as they can check their blind spot. And that's usually before the six weeks are over. In terms of comfort, it, that usually takes a few weeks after the surgery. It can be quite common to get some pain in the back of the neck where the disc has been squashed down for a while as it's worn. As we restore the height in that neck, that can give you a little bit of muscular pain through the stretch, but that's usually short lived and settles down quite nicely. <laughs>